We're here today to introduce auto capture on the Z9. It's great for stuff like this. Firmware 4 for the Z9 is here. It includes auto capture. We've been shooting stills with auto capture with amazing results. We'll show you how to set it up so you can get those results as well. The way that we see auto capture working for photographers in the real world is that there's two main use cases. Really, if you have one main camera and then a second camera and you're just a single photographer on your own, you could use auto capture with that second camera to capture something that allows you to then go and shoot something completely different. What we've been doing is setting a camera up and then going and shooting a second still and having that first auto capture camera running stills or video, and in this instance, stills. The second major use case for auto capture is the ability to place the camera in a position that you wouldn't want to be or can't be when the action happens. And that just really allows you to get a different shot or a unique shot that maybe no one else has got before. Over the past two days, we've been shooting with auto capture and using it with a number of different subjects. We've got everything from mountain biking to wakeboarding as well. And we just want to show you those examples and talk you through the setup process to make sure that when you want to use auto capture, you know what all the different settings and options do. So we're just going to take you through how to set up auto capture for stills. So first off, we'll press the menu button. We will go into the photo shooting menu. I'll go down to auto capture. And let's have a look at the options that we've got. The first thing we can do is select user presets. This enables you to create up to five user presets where you can store your favorite auto capture settings. So that's how you'd set up a preset. Let's go in and configure auto capture to start recording a sequence. So after pressing the start button, you get this menu. We have options here for the capture criteria. This is how auto capture is going to trigger. You can trigger on motion, you can trigger on subject detection, or you can set auto capture to trigger at a set distance when the action starts. So let's look at motion. So by setting motion here, we toggle that on or off. You can do this all by touchscreen if you enable the touchscreen settings as well on your Z9. The speed criteria here, if we press the OK button, we can go in here, you can see using your front and rear command dials, we can change the speed setting and the subject size. This enables you to customize how fast or slow you want auto capture to react and the size of the subject you want it to react to. One being the slowest, five being the fastest. So one of the other things we can configure here is the direction that the subject is moving in. So by configuring the direction, we can tell the camera to look for motion in only certain directions, which is really, really useful if you know what is going to happen. If you've enabled the touchscreen settings on your camera, we can now mask out an area where we don't want auto capture to look at. So just by touching the back of your screen here, we can mask out blocks. So anything that comes up in red here is masked out. So the camera will not react to subjects in those areas. We now move to recording time. Recording time is how long you want the camera to fire for when it is in the auto capture mode. We can set a length of speed here. So say for example, if we recorded it here for 20 seconds and we set the camera to continuous low or continuous high, you will then be shooting for 20 seconds at 10 frames a second, for example, if it was on continuous low. Wait after shooting enables you to tell the camera to shoot another sequence after it's finished the first sequence. Let's have a look at using detection here, subject detection. So I'm gonna turn off motion and we're gonna to go to detection here. So we put detection on here and now we can move into the subject detection menu. We can choose the subject size and if we press the minus key here, we can now choose whether we're on auto area where it's looking for vehicles, animals or people or we could set this specifically for one of those particular subjects. If we go back now and we set a distance setting here. So if we're using distance, we can set a band for which the camera is looking for that motion in or looking for our subject. Here you can see we've set the near distance to 2.8 meters and the far distance to 3.6 meters. So the camera is only going to react to movement in that space. So within the motion setting, 
We can actually use all three at the same time or we could use them individually like we've just been through. So if I was to turn on more than one here, let's move to motion and let's move to detection. So we're now looking for motion and we're looking for subject detection as well. We'll press OK here. That gives me the option now to set the speed and the size and to set a specific area that we're going to capture, whether it's people, animals or vehicles. All of these settings enable us to fine tune the setup for the image we want to capture. Once you've finished setting up auto capture like this and you have the required settings dialed in, press the I button or touch on next here and you now go onto the start and end screen. Hit start and that will enable auto capture to be ready to do its thing. So now that you've seen all the different options that you can control and customize for auto capture, we really wanted to show you some real world examples that myself and Neil have been shooting together over the past couple of days. So let's dive into some of those and see what we did. For the first mountain bike example, we're here in a very tight channel at the top of a hill and we want to use the use case of allowing the camera in auto capture to capture stills and then using a second camera that's handheld in a different position to shoot through the entire range of a single run. So at the very top, I've got one camera that's set up with a 14 to 24 really nice wide angle shot. This is going to be using auto capture with motion. The subject speed is going to be at one because there's nothing else moving in the frame. So there's not going to be anything else that triggers that. And also because our subject is going to fly right past our camera very quickly, we're going to be in a situation where the camera is only going to be shooting for two seconds at a time. So further down the run, I set up a camera, same settings as Rishi was using. So we're using the speed of one there to capture the rider as he came down the run. That enabled me to go and grab my other camera so I could finish with a long lens shot, compress the perspective. I get a completely different look to the image as the rider completed his run. It's also probably worth mentioning that all of that's kind of happening at the same time. So you might see it individually as we're showing you these shots on the back of the camera, but that was one single run that at most was like over in five seconds, really. So it's not like you could do lots of multiple runs and position yourself in every single point. Auto capture allowed us to shoot that relatively quickly in one single go, which I think was amazing. And we got three angles on it as well. Yeah, Two of yeah. the places where it was really difficult to stand and yeah. really difficult when the riders were coming past, we just wouldn't want to be Especially there. Especially with all the dust and everything, yeah, for oh, sure, yeah. for sure. We've come further down into the forest here. We're on a different part of the run. This is a lot more challenging for the riders and to take pictures at. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to place the camera underneath a jump. So we're going to get a look up shot. This means the camera can't see the rider, so I'm going to have to put on pre-release capture. So I've set the camera to 30 frames a second. That enables the pre-release capture mode. I've set up pre-release capture for a second, and now I've set auto capture on as well. So we've got two fantastic systems working in tandem here. We set speed to one, we set size to one because of the speed at which the rider is coming through this part of the jump. We've set the area detection on as well. And as you can see here, I've masked off the left and right of the frame, which means that these plants and these trees, which are moving in the slight breeze we've got, will not activate the camera. So we've masked those areas off. So we're just looking at the area where the cyclist is gonna come through, hit the jump. We will see this completely blind with the camera will fire and we'll capture a great sequence of images. After mountain biking, we decided to take a look at wakeboarding. There was lots of opportunities to place the camera in a position that you just wouldn't normally be able to shoot from. And we were really excited about some of the things we could capture with auto capture. For this first wakeboard location, the camera is rigged to a pylon in the lake. The wakeboarders will be carving past this camera at high speed. Now, the big problem is, is that we had movement in the water. And if you kept your speed setting to a relatively low speed setting, then the movement in the water would trigger the auto capture. So we had to increase the speed of the auto capture setting to five to make sure that the camera wasn't being triggered by any movement in the water and was only being triggered by the faster movement of the subjects going through the frame. We are still overall relying on motion for this shot and we have a total runtime of three seconds. Again, the subject is still coming past us relatively quickly, so we don't need our camera to continue to shoot for longer than three seconds. So we've moved to a different part of the lake here. We're on a different jump. 
doing a completely different shot. We've changed the lens here, gone to 100, 400. This gives me the opportunity to compress the shot as the weight borders come across the kicker off the jump there. So this is going to look really, really good. We've set it to motion detection and we're on speed two and size two, given the size of the weight borders in the frame and the speed at which they're going to hit this jump. So after leaving auto capture running, this has freed me up to go and stand in another position on the lake. I'm going to grab my 24-120 and shoot some contextual images of the weight borders coming across a different set of jumps. For the final weightboarding position, we placed our camera on the back side of a ramp. Auto capture will capture some great images of the weightboarders coming up and over. The biggest concern that we had was making sure that the camera was secured in place, so hence why we used a safety suction cup to keep it in place as well. So it was double attached to the back side of the ramp. We still have that Z9, so we didn't lose it in the end. Um, but it was definitely a, a precarious place to put a camera, and it got us some really good shots in the end. I think it was worthwhile. So hopefully that tells you a little bit more about auto capture on firmware 4 on the Z9 and how to set it up. So this allows you to be more creative with your photography and go off and shoot from different angles and different perspectives while auto capture is capturing the images where you left it.